let us continue with the next questions in case of threads so what are the various types of threads basically if we talk about types of threads they are uh, divided based on the criteria that whether the thread is created with the support of operating system or uh, there is a separate library in the system which is designed to support that at the user level or it is most over provided or supported by the operating system kernel so kernel is basically a component of operating system which is set as the heart of operating system which is managing uh, all the operations or functions uh, which are requirements of an operating system so kernel is the entity which is responsible for every operation that is being performed as part of the operating system that's why it is set as the heart of operating system so if you talk about threads uh, there are two types first is user level thread then we have kernel level threads if you talk about user level thread these are supported above the kernel threads that means the thread creation if we do it at our end by use of our own programming languages they are supported above the operating system level threads means the system level threads which the system is going to create to support the various operations so user level threads if we create they will execute prior to the kernel level thread that is the meaning of supported above kernel thread and thread is implemented by use of this thread library which is available at the user level so there is a thread library which is being supporting to create the threads it is supported above the or implemented at the user level means user is going to implement it by use of some kind of programming language which is supporting that thread creation and management then as kernel is unaware about the user level threads so user level thread will look like to operating system as a separate independent process although it is part of the main process so even if we are implementing the thread at the owner level or the user level so they will be unknown uh, to the operating system or you can say uh, your kernel is unaware of the user level threads being created because for kernel that user level thread will be treated as a small process okay then we have uh, the criteria that as they are not supported by the operating system and they don't require any kind of operating systems intervention so they are fast to create and manage because if we are talking about operating system related tasks system related tasks will be much slower as compared to the user related operations then second type of thread is the kernel thread which is supported directly by the operating system and that means the thread creation management and scheduling all is done in the kernel space and kernel is the one which is responsible for performing that operation if you talk about user level threads their creation scheduling and management is done at the user space and supported by the thread library at the user level so that is the main difference between the user level and the kernel level threads one is supported by thread library at the user level another is supported by directly operating system as it is directly supported by operating systems and its creation is done so it will be slower to create and manage because operating system is dealing with n number of operations and it has to handle another operation of thread creation and scheduling and its management if we schedule the thread if we uh, manage the thread so if we do it at the user level it is the responsibility of user and the user level programs to perform that scheduling and management but as it is created by the operating system so it is responsibility of os to create schedule and manage so that's why they are said to be slow as compared to the user level threads next is what are the benefits of multi threaded approach means or multi threaded programming if suppose we implement multi threading in a system so what are the benefits that we can achieve from it first benefits that we can achieve from it is responsiveness that means the system will be more responsive and we need not wait for a lengthy process to complete its operation till the cpu can be switched to some other process so need not to wait for a lengthy process that means it will become more responsive uh, like there are a number of small small processes which are being executed by the cpu so as cpu switches between different processes so cpu will get the benefit of the efficiency and system will get more responsive means different processes will get the cpu in less amount of time so the output will generate faster of various operations which the user is performing then we have resource sharing as responsiveness has been increased so resource sharing will be also 
easy in case we support multi thread and fast then we have economy economical because switching between threads is very easy as compared to processes because threads are of smaller size so context switching requires some amount of memory what is context switching we'll discuss that although it is basically operation of uh, transferring the control of cpu between different processes while they are executing so that economy is moreover uh, used reduced because based on this context switching between threads is very easy and uh, utilization of multi processor architecture which says that as multiple processors are there so they must be loaded with processes in order to perfectly utilize their processing power so if we have n number of threads so threads can be distributed to different processors to execute them independently of each other so that can be another utilization of multi processor architecture will be more efficient or perfectly uh, utilized processor will be there in case we are using multi threading approach in spite of creating long and lengthy processes so next come is context switching which we have talked in this economy point so context switching is basically transferring the control of cpu the control of basically cpu is transferred from the one process to another process and which requires the saving the state of old process and loading the state of a new process and that means when we switch the cpu from one process suppose p1 to another process p2 and both are not completed actually so when we switch from p1 to p2 we need to store the state of that p1 process somewhere so that when after completing or after executing some part of p2 the cpu returns back to p1 due to context switching p2 can p1 can start from the previous state it should not start from the first location it should start from the previously executed state and all the previously executed instruction should be known to that particular cpu so saving the state means what is the current state of a process when the context switching initially happened and when the control is back to that process it should start from not from scratch it should start from where it was left initially so that is basically saving the state so we need to save the state of that old process and while loading a new process again we have to load the saved state of the new process suppose the cpu is switching n number of times between p1 and p2 like p1 and p2 there are two processes and cpu is constantly switched between p1 and p2 for time sharing requirement initially the p1 is given control then p2 then again p1 then again p2 and this process is going on till both the processes are over or completed okay so in this way the cpu is being interchanged between these two processes so in this scenario the thing is that once for first time p1 is switched to p2 the state of p1 is saved suppose state of p1 is saved as s1 and when p2 again switched back to p1 the control of cpu from p2 to p1 is switched so p2 state will be stored as m1 means this is the current status of p2 this is how much m1 is basically how much p1 p2 has been executed before context switching context switching se pehle p1 p2 kitna execute ho gaya and similar is this s1 which is before context switching how much p1 has been completed so once p1 again gives the control of cpu to p2 after some time suppose p1 gives control of cpu back to p2 so state of p1 will be saved again in some other storage suppose that is s2 so as you can see initially at the second point when p2 gives control back to p1 this s1 state will be used for executing p1 further because s1 is the previous state of this p1 process which is used for executing it from that particular state and when the p1 leaves the control again state is stayed saved as a new value s2 then when at third step p2 is getting control of cpu then cpu will access this m1 to retrieve the state of p2 which it was before giving control at the second step second step pe p1 ko control dene se pehle p2 ki jo state save hui thi that will be utilized for execution over the cpu similar as the case in case of fourth 
when the fourth statement or fourth switching happened so m2 will be saved in case p2 is not complete p2 if p2 is not complete any further so state of p2 will be again saved as m2 once the control of cpu receives back to p2 so this p2 state m2 state will be utilized for executing that process so that is the meaning of saving the state of old process and loading the saved state for a new process so this is how the states are being utilized for executing or context switching so all this process is known as context switching so in case of economy in case of multi threaded environment the idea is that if we context switch between threads storing of these states s1 s2 m1 m2 will be easy so that's why we are saying that economy it will be more economical to perform that operation because data which will be storing in this s1 s2 m1 m2 will be very less because while context switching as we are storing the state of the system so we will be storing some data corresponding to that process so this s1 s2 is basically data corresponding to the current state of this p1 process and p2 also store some data in form of m1 m2 so that data requires some memory so in case the memory requirement is less so we can say it is more economical as well as fast so that's why we can say multi threaded architecture gives us this advantage next what are the disadvantages that we can get from context switching time taken from switching from one process to other process result in overhead because as we are switching from one to another so overhead will be there that is a wasted time because we have to save the state of the previous process and load the state of the upcoming process so based on that context switching will take some amount of time that will be delay so delay is not uh, good for a system that's why it is it can be said as disadvantage although it is the requirement and system does not use uh, does not do any useful work while switching so that is another reason wasting the cpu time just for switching purpose one of the solution is go for threading wherever possible because in that case it will be more economical so threading se advantage wahi nikal ke aa raha it will be more economical to switch among threads as compared to processes because processes are heavy then we have the concept of scheduling scheduling is basically a uh, phenomena where we schedule the cpu among different processes schedule means decide which process will get the cpu when so that process is basically termed as scheduling so in order to perform that scheduling various various schedulers which are being used in the system one of them is long term scheduler another is termed as short term scheduler apart from these two scheduler there is one more that is medium term scheduler but we generally discuss about long term and short term so if someone ask you what is long term short term and what is the difference between them so these are the differences that you can make out so long term schedulers are basically termed as job scheduler they select processes from the job queue and load them into memory for execution as we have discussed about the states of the process if you remember that the states of the process one of the state is ready state in ready state the memory is being allocated to processes and before that ready state we have something called as new state so new state is the one in which this job queue is created job queue means a queue of processes which are waiting for memory allocation so load them into memory means memory is being allocated to them for execution means before the cpu executes your process it needs to be loaded into memory before execution so that is done in the ready state so once the memory is allocated to a process it becomes ready for execution and it can be put to the cpu so that idea of long term scheduler is to select the processes out of the job queue and move them to the memory and make them ready for execution then next is your short term scheduler short term scheduler will take the control after loading the process into memory so these are called called as the cpu schedulers just like this long term are referred as job scheduler short term are cpu schedulers and they can select a process from the ready queue which is being allocated memory now and allocate the cpu to one of them based on the policy which the operating system can decide okay so short term schedulers are more over cpu schedulers which select a process from the ready queue and allocate the cpu to one of them which are waiting for cpu allocation 
So that is the idea about short term and long term schedulers. Then there are various scheduling queues which are being used in order to perform that scheduling. One of the queues that we have discussed is the job queue. So when a process enters into the system, it is placed in the job queue. That is the idea of the job queue. So suppose there are n number of processes entering into the system. So we need to keep up a queue. Queue is like a data structure which is being used to represent your different elements which are part of it and represent their incoming time or outgoing time based on that we can create the queue. So that job queue is used to queue up the processes which are coming into the system. Then we have ready queue processes that are residing in the main memory. When we are in the ready state, when processes are in the ready state, they are waiting for execution over the CPU. So a separate list is being maintained for those processes which is called as the ready queue. That means the process when the processes are in the ready queue, they are waiting for execution over the CPU. So ready queue is maintained in the ready state of that process. Then we have device queue also. Device queue is basically list of processes which are in waiting state for a particular input output device or for any other operation. So device queue is moreover for processes which are in their waiting state, waiting for some input output device to perform their operation. So during that waiting operation, they are in the device queue when they are waiting for this particular IO device to execute over that particular device. So these are the various types of scheduling queues which you find in the system. Then there is another component which is called as dispatcher. It gives the control of the CPU to the process selected by the short term scheduler. As we now know, the short term scheduler is responsible for providing the CPU to the selected process out of the ready queue. So CPU is given to a process. So the process which is being given the CPU, the control of the CPU is transferred by this particular component. Once the short term scheduler select a process for scheduling over the CPU, it is the dispatcher who will schedule that CPU for that particular process. Dispatcher moves the process to the CPU so that it can be executed over it. And what are the steps involved in that operation? What we do is context switching, switching to the user mode and jumping to the proper location in the user program to restart that program. So that is the case in which we are performing context switching of different processes corresponding to different processes and related with the dispatcher. So even the context switching time dispatcher is being provided with this role of giving the CPU to the process.